Hey, Evan, how you doing? All set? Yep. Great. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the NCAA March Madness postgame press conference featuring the victorious USC Trojans. Coming up, we will hear from head coach Andy Enfield, but as you see now, freshman forward Evan Mobley with us after his 17 points, game high 11 rebounds for his 11th double-double of the season. And we will begin the press conference here. Evan, thanks for joining us and congratulations. Media members, don't forget, use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first since Evan can't see you. It's helpful if you can state your name and organization before asking your questions. And first up, we'll turn to Adam Grossbard with the OC Register and Southern California News Group. Adam, here in a moment, you can unmute yourself, then go ahead and ask your question. Evan, Drake missed 19 of its first 21 shots to start the second half. How did you guys ramp up the defensive intensity after halftime? Uh, we felt like we started the game out pretty good um, in the first half, uh, guarding him. And then uh, Yesufu, he got hot, and we really wanted to lock in on him uh, for the second half, and that's what we did, and um, that's what where the stat came from. We really locked in on defense. Okay, thanks for your question. Adam, next, Ryan Karchi with the LA Times. Ryan, here in a sec, please unmute yourself and then ask your question. Hey, Evan, I know you guys, you said that you guys wanted to lock down on Yusufu in the second half. What was the message just from Coach Enfield and what was kind of the vibe in the in the locker room at halftime? Um, we we're, we we're up three, um, so we were happy with, 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 with where we were at, but um, we really wanted to lock in on defense because um, we knew our offense would come to us, um, but it was mainly a defensive focus. What was the key to locking down? Were you guys doing anything different in particular? Um, no, we didn't really do any different, anything different, but um, we just treated uh, Yesufu as like their main star player. So we like really, uh, every, anywhere he was, we called him out and uh, really locked in on him. Thanks for your question, Ryan. Moving along, Bill Plaschke from the LA Times. Bill? Yes, Evan, uh, how important is it for you guys to make USC basketball a brand in Southern California? You grew up there. You know how it gets overshadowed by everything. How important is it for you to use this moment, this momentum to make yourselves known? Um, I feel like it's very important. Um, this year we've done great so far, so we're just going to keep taking it game by game and um, hopefully make it as far as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Bill. Next up, we'll turn to Rich Rubin from WeAreSC.com. Rich, can unmute yourself and ask your question. Evan, uh, great game. Um, what did it feel like coming out on the court for your first NCAA game, uh, knowing that you were going to be a focus of the Drake defense? Um, I feel like uh, I just took it as any other game. Um, just try to stay locked in because I'm usually the main focus of a lot of uh, teams. So I just try to stay locked in, uh, stick to our game plan that we talked about before the game, and uh, just try to win the game. And, and what was that game plan? <clears throat> um, lock in on Yesfu. Uh, it starts on defense, and then our offense will come to us. Thanks, Evan. And thank you, Rich. Next up. Shotgun Spratling with uscfootball.com. Shotgun, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Evan. Uh, Isaiah obviously has a big game for you guys, you know, even though he didn't play a bunch with, with some foul trouble. What changes, you know, from a defensive perspective um, going against you guys when he's, you know, producing for you guys as well? Um, it changes the game a, a lot. Uh, when other people, other players are a threat on our team, uh, they they got to lock in on them more, and which leaves uh, other players open, such as me or anybody else. Um, so when other players are doing well, it always just opens the floor up. What do you think about the the matchup with Kansas getting an opportunity to play against them? What'd you say? 
What do you think about the matchup with Kansas in the next round getting to play them? Oh, um, I think it's going to be a great game, a great matchup. Uh, they're they're a great team. We're a great team. So um, we're just going to be locked in and uh, try to get the win. Okay, thank you, Shotgun. John, with the Associated Press, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Evan, John Warrell with the Associated Press. Um, just knowing that you've played with your brother uh, all this season, and, and, and just was, what was, was there a significance or a moment in which uh, you, you, you can cherish this, this, this victory, you know, at, at, you know, with your brother, knowing that it's, it's your, your first season? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, we both had great games, I feel like. Uh, I think he had 15, I had 17. Um, both put up pretty big numbers. Um, so we we're going to uh, cherry this as win, but we can't dwell on it too long because we got other games coming up. Thank you. Thanks, John. Now we'll turn to Mark Wicker with the Orange County Register. Mark, go ahead. Evan, how much have you learned this year about playing defense in the paint? I, today in particular, you know, you, you were able to, to challenge people and yet still keep your feet, not foul them, kind of play the angles, and, and it seemed to frustrate them. I know you've done that all year, but how much has this year been instrumental to you learning more about that? Um, yeah, in college, there's a lot more details that goes into defense than um, in high school. So I really just uh, used what the coach taught me uh, stay down. Uh, that was probably my biggest thing I learned because um, I, I, I get jumpy sometimes, but uh, I just try to stay down and uh, contest the shot if, I, if not block it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Adam with the OC Register. Evan, Drew, Peterson got you guys going on offense early in this game, and then uh, you know big three to kind of stabilize after Yusuf know, got it down to seven. Like, what did his impact have on this game? Uh, he also had a big impact on the game. Um, anytime we needed a, a big bucket or a big uh, a, a bucket, um, he he came up big, hit that three, um, or he would drive to the, the lane and just shoot over the uh, guards because they're uh, smaller than him. So he played a big role in this game. Okay, thank you, Adam. And next, let's go to Ryan with the LA Times. Hey, Evan, you talked about how you guys locked down on Yusufu in the second half. What was maybe lacking in that first half when he scored those 18 points? Um, probably att attention to focus. Um, we assumed he was going to uh, be their main uh, scorer, but uh, we didn't really lock in on him the entire possession. Um, and then second half, that's when, when we were pointing and talking and uh, letting our teammates know where he was at so he couldn't um, score as much. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Rich with WeRSC.com. Please unmute yourself to ask your question. Um, Evan, what, what do you know about uh, uh, Kansas at this point? Have you looked at all or seen them play at all this year? Um, yeah, I, I heard of, I mean, I know of a few players on the team. Um, I think some of them have COVID right now, but uh, I don't really know too much about the team so far, but I'm sure um, we're gonna go over film and talk about everybody in a, pretty soon. Thank you. Okay, time for just a, another question or two. Let's go to Mark with the OC Register. Please unmute yourself to ask your question. What did you think of the offensive flow uh, in the second half? You talked about how yeah, you knew it would come. Uh, you know, I'm sure everybody was getting a little antsy waiting for it to come, but what was it like in the second half? That, what do you think key to that was? And, in terms of the offense flowing a little better? Um, I think uh, we just ran our plays. Whenever the co coaches called some, we ran them to a T, uh, executed them, and that was our key to our offense uh, tonight. And then whenever there was a mismatch, uh, big on a little or something like that, uh, we would take advantage of that. Thank you. And finally, again, Ryan with the LA Times. Ryan? 
Oops, sorry, I'm all good. You're all good. All right, well, with that, Evan, thank you again for your time. Congratulations, and best of luck against Kansas. All right, thank you. We'll be joined momentarily by USC head coach Andy Enfield. And you can use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Hi, coach. Thank you very much for joining us. Give you a set to get set. When coach is ready, we'll begin with an opening statement from Andy. Congratulations on the win. And after the opening statement, we'll go to questions. When we do, you can use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. And when you're called on for your question, just to repeat, please state your name and media affiliation uh, first. But uh, Coach Enfield, congratulations on the win. Thanks for your time. Uh, before we go to questions, can you please give us a brief opening statement? Well, congratulations to Drake, Coach DeVries, Coach Richter, the rest of their staff, their players. They've had an incredible season this year. Uh, they gave us everything uh, we could handle tonight. And uh, congratulations to Drake uh, on a great season. Uh, I thought our guys showed a lot of defensive toughness, especially in the second half, to pull this win out. And uh, we're, we're happy to go on to the next round. Great. Now we'll go to questions from the media. Again, use the raised hand function to indicate if you want to ask a question. See, for our first question, we'll start with Ryan Karchi from the LA Times. Ryan, you can unmute yourself and then ask your question. Hey, Andy, you mentioned just locking down in the second half on defense. What'd you tell the team in the locker room at halftime? And what would you say was the biggest difference in that effort after halftime? Well, the biggest thing was to take away Yesifu. He was on fire in the first half. He's a great player, great offensive player. And our goal was to take their best player out of the game in the second half and make everything tough. And I thought we did a good job of switching man and zone. And we made him work. And I think he got tired. But uh, he's just a... Tremendous offensive player. He made his first four threes from deep. And uh, I thought uh, to hold them to 18% in the shooting in the second half, uh, credit to our guys. They really defended and, and played very hard. How much of a difference did Evan make in this game? Obviously, he had that huge size advantage. Um, it seemed like, especially in that second half, he, he was really keeping them out of the paint. Well, he's in the middle of our zone the last 10 minutes. We played zone and man-to-man. -man, uh, he, he had three blocks tonight, but he challenged a lot of shots. He made those floaters go a little higher than normal. I thought our length getting out to the shooters bothered them a little bit, especially in the second half. So it was a team effort, but Evan is obviously a big part of our team defense. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Moving on, Adam Grossbard with the OC Register and Southern California News Group. Adam? Here you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Andy, given you know how little NCAA tournament experience your team had coming into this game, how did you feel like they handled their first taste of the tournament? I thought our guys really kept their composure the entire game. We limited our turnovers. We had a lot of assists. I think we had uh, we had 20 assists tonight, three turnovers at halftime. So. We shared the basketball and offense. We made some big shots, and I think we defended at a very high level. So uh, we, we've played in a lot of big games this year. We've played in a lot of close games. We've played uh, a lot of road games. And, and so uh, to us, this was uh, it sure, sure as March Madness. But I think once you get into the flow of the game, you realize that we've been here before a lot, even though we haven't played in the tournament. Chavez Goodwin's the only player on our roster that's played in March Madness, uh, and no one else has. So uh, I was very proud of them, how they kept the composure the entire game. And what impact did it have seeing Isaiah Mobley and Drew Peterson, you know, score some points early and kind of just diversify the offense? Well, Drew had some – we posted Drew up in the first half. He got to the rim he, off ball screens. He was able to use his length and shoot over some people. And then Isaiah got some good post touches. But he, got, he, he was in foul trouble, had his third foul early in the second half, only played eight minutes in the first. And then I thought once he came back in for the – for, for the last 12 to 13 minutes of the game, he was sensational in posting up, getting position, and finishing with his jump hooks. Okay, thanks, Adam. Next, we'll go to Shotgun Spratling with uscfootball.com. Shotgun, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Andy, what did this game on a national stage say about your defense? 
Well, we've been good all season for the most part. I, I know we've, we've lost a few games where our defense wasn't uh, where, where it needed to be, but tonight it was, and, and that's what it takes in, in this tournament. So uh, uh, we're a good defensive team. We, have, uh, we, we play very hard, and we have size and length at most positions. So uh, I'm really, our, staff, our coaching staff is really happy with, with how we defended. Now, Drake is really hard to guard because they spread you out. They drive the ball, they kick it out, and they have, they have an elite score in, in Yesufu. So uh, it was a very good team effort. And why did you guys decide to switch to zone in the final 10 minutes? You, you've been locking down man-to-man -man the first 10 minutes. What, what, what went into the decision? Uh, well, we wanted to mix our defense. That was our game plan, mix our defenses up. And I, I thought if we, we could keep two guards on Yesufu out top, that would wear him out a little more. Uh, he had to work for everything he got. And, and then we have uh, length on our wings. And, and so uh, I thought we did a great job of challenging their threes. So really it's just a, a way to mix up the defenses, uh, give them a different look, and use some of our strengths. And then it was very successful, so we stayed in it. Okay, thanks, Shotgun. Next up, we'll go to Rich Rubin from wersc.com. Rich, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, Andy, congratulations. Um, Taj did not have a big scoring game, but had a ton of assists. Um, well, that's probably the most assists I think he's had in any game, maybe any two games. What, what, what did you think of his play? We had 10 assists and no turnovers before he threw it away against the press late. Uh, that wasn't really his fault. So 10 assists, one turnover is a great game for a lead guard, no matter how many points you score. He played very good defense. Uh, and I think he made a couple big shots. He made that uh, shot off the, uh, the mid-range jump shot, and then he made a big three with about six, seven minutes left. So he played a complete game tonight. He missed a couple easy ones in the first half, but uh, 10 assists and one turnover is, is a tremendous game for, for any lead guard. Thanks, Andy. And thank you, Rich. Next, Mark Wicker with the OC Register. You can unmute yourself and ask your question, Mark. Andy, how much progress has Evan made on the details of post defense this year? You see him, you know, staying down, not going for fakes, staying out of, you know, today is particularly staying out of foul trouble and, and making the angles more complicated. Is that, is that how much progress have you seen in that over the course of the season? Well, Evan Mobley's a freshman has improved every week and every month of the season. He's learned how to guard physical bigs he's learned how to guard athletic bigs and and also guys that have a lot of skill with shot fakes so he, he has to guard a lot of different people we switch him out on guards we switch him out on other bigs uh so, so he he's uh, really improved defensively uh, and offensively and what you're seeing now is a complete player uh, he, he did a great job on both ends of the floor tonight also it seems like the the defense at the rim is is pretty contagious you saw max contesting lobs and and being real active, I mean, how much how much do you think that radiates through the whole team? Oh, Max, I thought was terrific in our zone. He he went for that lob, but I thought he blocked it. They called a foul, so whether it was a foul or not, he still made a good play on the ball. He also blocked a shot from the weak side on the left side of the basket uh, late in the game, and, and he was active, and that's what we need from him. He's six eight, long arms. He's he's very quick. His first step's extremely quick, and he can close out on shooters very quickly. So uh, when we went zone, we, we had him in there for a reason, and, he, and I thought he really did a nice job. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Now we'll go to Bill Plaschke with the LA Times. Bill? Andy, how important is it that this team perform well on this national stage to increase your presence in Southern California? Well, Bill, we have 45 wins the last two years, which is third in the country behind Baylor and Kansas, and we play Kansas in the next round. So uh, we're 45 and 16 the last two years, and, and our guys unfortunately didn't have the chance to compete last year in the tournament. We would probably would have been a pretty good seed, and uh, so so it is important to get back here and, and win a game uh, because uh, our players didn't have the opportunity to do it last year, and we were really good last year playing great basketball. We were we were, we were really physical and def a great defensive team last year. So so yeah, after after a two year uh, break, and this this meant a lot to our program and, and to our team and to our players and coaching staff because uh, no one got to participate last year in this tournament. So it's extra special right now to be here, and it's also extra special to win a game. It's hard to get to the NCAA tournament, and it's very difficult to win a game in the tournament. And so we'll we'll try our best to win two uh, against a very good team. Could this could this be your best team that you've had at USC? 
uh, one of them. Uh, we were really good a few years ago uh, with McLaughlin and Melton and, and Chemezi and Boatwright and Stewart and Jonah Matthews and Kosvik and uh, we, we were pretty good. Uh, we won two games in the tournament that year, won 26 games overall. We were, and then the next year we, we, we came in second in the league and had 24 wins. So I would say that uh, those two teams and this team are our top three and, and who, who's best. Uh, and then last year's team with Onyeka and, and some seniors, we were 22-9 and nine last year. And I thought last year's team was different because we were so tough and so defensive-minded and really, really good defensively. So, so if you, if you uh, put a Final Four tournament of those four teams, it, it would be fun to watch. And, and uh, I would sit back and not coach and just watch those guys go at it because we've had a lot of good players here the last few years. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Next, John Wauro with the Associated Press. John? Hi, Andy. Yeah, John Wauro with the AP. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but uh, the NCAA just announced that uh, uh, VCU is out of the tournament for COVID reasons. How much of a reminder is that, um, you know, uh, uh, of the environment and, and the reality that everybody's facing there in Indy? Uh, well, I I'm not sure. Uh... Uh, I, I, that's really devastating. I didn't hear that, uh, to have VCU out of the tournament. That's really heartbreaking. Obviously, when you get to this uh, tournament, it's a dream come true for all these players that work so hard, so, so I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, but it is a reminder that we just have to stay safe, and, and, and sometimes uh, uh, the COVID takes twists and turns that they're unexpected, and, and so I am very sorry to hear that. And, and, and on, on that note, you're catching Kansas at a time that are short-manned um, do you see that as good as they are? Do you see that as, as maybe a bit of an edge? I don't see that as an edge at all. I think they had most of their team today. Maybe one player was out, uh, but uh, they're, they're, they're just exceptional. Uh, they have so much talent. Uh, they're so experienced. They have veterans at different positions, and so we'll have to play a great game to have a chance to beat them on Saturday or, or on Monday, I'm sorry. Thank you. And thank you, John. Uh, finally, we'll go back to Shotgun Spratling with uscfootball.com. Shotgun, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. I'm sorry, I didn't have anything else. Apologize. Okay. Um, well, we'll give John Tietel from hoopshd.com the last question. John? Thanks, John Tietel from hoopshd.com. Uh, Coach, uh, you finished your career as the best free throw shooter in NCAA history. My question is, how much does it drive you nuts when your team shoots 53%? And are you worried that it's going to eventually cost you at some point this month? Well, uh, when good free throw shooters go up there and miss, there's not a whole lot you can do as a head coach except uh, be, be uh, uh, frustrated that they missed. Uh, you know, we, we've shot pretty well for most of the season uh, other than uh, two players, and those guys have improved. Isaiah Mobley went up there tonight and made two, two free throws, and, and he made a big three for us. He's really shot the three ball uh, well lately. Chavez Goodwin has struggled a little bit, but he's improving from the foul line. But when your guards are shooting 75 or 80% and they go up and miss, there's not a whole lot you can do. Uh, the, the Tajidi missed the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure he wish he would have made both, but uh, it, it's not from a lack of technique or a lack of, lack of confidence. He just missed a shot. So... Yeah, we've we've uh, uh, we've struggled from the foul line at times this year. It's it's been mainly two guys, but I, uh, I'm happy to, and our staff is happy that those two guys have improved a little bit. And uh, Isaiah's shooting the ball much better right now. So uh, we know the free throws are important, just like everything else. But Evan went two for four tonight. So so you know when he misses two free throws, I'm not going to take him out of the game because he does so many other things. So sometimes sometimes uh, uh, it does affect our uh, affect our game. But but hopefully on uh, Monday we'll, we'll shoot the ball well. Andy, we appreciate your time. Congratulations again. Best of luck going forward against Kansas. Thank you. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of Coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.veritone.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.
Okay, we have Drake head coach Darren DeVries. Uh, we will start with an opening statement from coach, and then we'll go to questions. For those media members out there, once again, uh, if you have a question for coach, use the raise hand function. And then once you're called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. Please note that coach cannot see you. So if you give your name and affiliation, we appreciate it. But in the meantime, coach, if you can give us an opening statement. Yeah, first of all, uh, congratulations to, to USC um, on advancing. You know, uh, uh, obviously we're, we're disappointed that uh, we have to go home, but, um, you know, certainly proud of um, our guys' effort, um, not only tonight, but this entire season. And, and uh, you hate to see it end, but, um, you know, I felt like, you know, we fought to the bitter, bitter end today and, and um, came up a little short. <clears throat> Okay, our first question is going to come from Harry Schroeder. Harry, go ahead. Yeah, Harry Schroeder here from Valley Hoops Insider. Darren, congratulations on a great season. I mean, I know it stings today. Can you put any kind of perspective on the really what is a historic season in, in Drake in Drake Bulldog basketball history? Yeah, as I, I've told you know people all year. I just love these guys. I, I love you know what they're all about and and how you know they've had to you know. Uh, be so resilient all year uh, to get to this point, to get to this game. Uh, you know, they're an incredible bunch of guys to coach and be around every day, and um, I, I couldn't be more proud of them. Okay, next we're going to go with Paul Oren. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, Paul here. Uh, Tank, he's 16 minutes in the first half. Looked like he was moving good early, a couple of baskets. Is it something to tighten up at halftime or anything? Yeah, our, our our plan, you know, he wanted to play a little bit longer in that first half and, and see, you know, instead of coming in and out, you know, get, he felt like it got sore the other night. So uh, we left him go a little longer stretch until, you know, basically right through halftime. And then, um, you know, it was pretty sore coming out of the halftime uh, locker room and, and we just made a decision to um, to not, not push it any further. And, and um, uh, so we decided to sit him that second half. <clears throat> Okay, our next question comes from Mark Emmert. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Darren, Mark Emmert, Des Moines Register. Uh, the second half, I think you missed 21 of your first 24 shots. Was that their length catching up with you there a little bit there, or maybe some fatigue, or what, what do you think happened? Yeah, I think it was a combination of both. Uh, you know, their zone uh, really bothered us. That, that length was hard for us to get in the interior and finish. Um, you know, we were trying to get it inside to, you know, you know, anywhere around the rim, you know, where we could get some scores or some easy baskets. Uh, they they just did a nice job. They're extremely long, and 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 we couldn't get to the spots we wanted to and finish over them, and and weren't able to get maybe as clean the looks as we would have liked on on even the th the threes against the zone. So, I, th I think it was a combination of all those things. And yeah, we we certainly got fatigued in that second half, uh, you know, a little bit. And and uh, but like I said, I I thought the guys continued to fight, and 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 uh, we just didn't have quite enough to to get back into it. Once again, if you have a question for Coach DeVries, please raise your hand, use the raise hand function, and uh, we'll call on you. Mark, it looks like you have another question for him. Hold on here just a second. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Darren, what was the impact of not having a Tank in the second half, do you think? Well, I think the impact was, you know, Tank's such a good finisher on the interior, you know, and that's um, in, in the first half we were able to get it in there on their zone, and Tank was a big part of that. Uh, so not having him and then not just maybe not having that, that luxury of, of subbing some guys a little bit more, um, that, which we would have liked to have done and kept us a little fresher. Uh, but definitely in that zone, that's that's where he's so good is on that interior of, of finishing and um, elevating, the, you know, up at the rim. Okay, we have another question from Harry Schrader. Go ahead, Harry. Yeah, Darren, talk about uh, Garrett Sturt's game today. I think he has a uh, 5.7 boards, four assists, four steals, four or five steals. I mean, he just kind of, for, for me, kind of epitomizes what you guys are about. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he he left it all out there. I mean, he was he was trying to make every winning play he could in that second half to keep us in it. You know, you know, getting steals, you know, offensive rebounds, diving for loose balls. Um, you know, again, he he was tremendous. Uh, you know, as as were a lot of the guys. You know, um, you look at you know we had 17 offensive rebounds, and I, that you know was Garrett and everybody else just um, you know trying to go find them, go, go get them on a night where we just we couldn't we couldn't you know, score consistently in that second half, but they continue to try to pursue the ball and give us extra opportunities. 
All right, we're going to go to Paul Oren next. Go ahead, Paul. Can you just kind of summarize what these last couple of days have been like? I mean, all of the, I mean, you, you're sitting on a Zoom call wearing a mask at the NCAA tournament. Like, it's, it's kind of surreal, this whole experience. Can you just kind of put into words kind of what this has all been like? It's been awesome. I mean, we've we've had a blast. To, um, you know, we've we've really enjoyed this opportunity uh, to be in the tournament, um, to win a game in advance, and um, you know, we we don't um, you know mind wearing the mask. We'd have loved to wear them for another another week here if we if we could have. But um, you know, from from our standpoint, uh, we're just thankful that we got got here and got this chance to play. Okay, our next question comes from Kevin McCaskill Jr. Uh, Kevin, go ahead. It's Kevin McCaskill Jr., FP Sports out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, how much time do you take before you start recruiting in your off-season program? Uh, you know, recruiting is, you know, pretty much year-round, so, you know, you continue to do that. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll give our guys some time off for sure. You know, they they need a break, deserve a break, and, and um, you know, let everybody – you know, heal up and get away for, for a while and, um, you know, en enjoy being, you know, college guys here, you know, for a few weeks. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start back up, um, you know, sometime down the road here. Okay, our next question comes from Mark Freund. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Darren, Mark Freund, WHO 13. Uh, I know a couple weeks ago you had said everyone's coming back uh, for next year. Do you anticipate that's still the case? Yeah, we do. I mean, well, um, you know, as, as far as we know, it's, uh, you know, that was is everybody's intention. So, you know, we'll meet this week to make sure that um, uh, that is still the case. But um, like I said, uh, you know, we're really excited about this group. Uh, it's a very close group and, and uh, um, you know, we're excited to see what they can do this off season to, to, to get ready for another another run at it next year. All right, we'll go back to Mark Emmer. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Darren, so in light of that, um, what do you hope those guys learn from this experience that's going to help them in the offseason and going into the next season? It seems like a big luxury for you. Yeah, I, I think we'll take a lot from this, you know, for playing both games. I, I think there were some things that, um, you know, just going through it is, is an experience. And, and that experience, if, if we are fortunate enough to make it back, um, you know, will be something very, very helpful for, for the guys that um, are returning for sure. So, um, you know, it's a, in, in these cases, it's a, it's a win or go home at the end of the year. You know, it's even different than a conference tournament if you don't have, you know, if you have postseason. So um, the urgency and, you know, that you have to play with. And, and I thought our guys did that in both games and, and, and really fought. So, uh, again, I'm excited to see, you know, what we can do and improve on uh, heading into next year. Okay, our next question comes from Matthew Judy. Matthew, go ahead. Hey, Coach Matthew Judy with Local 5 here in Des Moines. You mentioned most guys are coming back. Obviously, you're adding more talent uh, coming in from recruiting, notably Tucker. Fans are going to have high hopes. What should fans' expectations be, and, and what are your expectations of the team going into next year? Well, you know, from our standpoint, you're starting over. You, I mean, you, you nothing carries over from one year to the next. Um, so you, you still got to, you know, go – Go work on it. You have to stay hungry and um, you know and get better. You know we uh, we we've got a lot of really you know good guys in the program. They love to work. They love to be in the gym, and I think um, you know each individual still has um, some growth that that can take place, which is a good thing. You know, we want to always continue to try to get better and better, both individually and as a team. And and um, I'm looking forward to to doing that uh, here this spring, summer, and fall with them uh, to see you know, what type of progress we can make. <clears throat> we have time for one or two more questions if anyone has them. If you do, please use the raise hand function. We do have one. Uh, this is last question. Uh, we go back to Harry Schrader. Go ahead, Harry. Uh, Darren, they just announced that Oregon's uh, going to miss their next game with COVID protocols and all that. And, and I just want to go back to that issue for you guys just – how difficult was it once you got to Indy? Or obviously, I've known you know we've talked about it. It's been tough all year long. But how difficult or how different was it there in Indianapolis for you guys once you got there? Well, I, I thought um, I thought it was all set up very well here. I mean, we were certainly um, 
know, isolated once we got here for about 18 hours, each in everybody's individual room while we waited for two different sets of, of tests to come back. Uh, once you got those tests, then we tested every, every day. Um, uh, and you, you weren't allowed to leave the hotel. So, uh, you, we were, um, I mean, I mean, it was, it was a seemingly a pretty secure bubble that, um, you know, we've been in this last week. All right, coach. Thanks. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> All right. We will have sophomore guard, Joseph Yesifu here in a few minutes. Once again, if you have questions for Joseph, please use the raise hand function. And we got Joseph here. So uh, once again, if media members, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. And when called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. Once again, reminder, Joseph cannot see you. He can only hear you. So please give him your name and your affiliation. We'll start with Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Go ahead, Kevin. Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, you tripled your scoring output from last season to this season. What did you work on in the extended off season? Uh, I just constantly worked out. Um, I took advantage of the quarantine time uh, with my trainer uh, and Nick. Um, he definitely been a huge factor. Then working out with my teammates when I came back over the summer. So that's definitely, uh, I was, uh, everybody kept me hungry for this season. Our next question comes from Mark Emmert. Mark, go ahead. Mark Emmert, Des Moines Register. Uh, Joseph, what, what was the biggest difference for you guys in the first and second half? What, what did you see out there? Looks like you guys might have got a little tired. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got a little tired um, playing like seven. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the rotation, but um, we, we got tired and then their length really caught up to us on um, their uh, zone. But we just couldn't figure it out, and they, they got the W. OK, our next question comes from Mark Freund. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, uh, Mark Freund, WHO 13. It seemed like USC's length was uh, really tough. Uh, closeouts seemed to force a lot of kind of bad misses. Is, is that how you experienced it, particularly in the second half there, where the long arms are really causing you problems? Uh, yes, sir. The, uh, the Mobley twins, they, they're the real deal, and credit to them. Um, but, the lo yeah, the long guard, their length is – we talked about that uh, yesterday when we were going through their, uh, our matchups and stuff. We knew that was going to be a huge thing, a rebounding. But we, I feel like our team left it all out there, and I couldn't be more prouder than the guys. All right, our next question comes from Chad Linskog. Chad, go ahead. Hey, Joseph, uh, Tank obviously missed four weeks, but he came back for the first four and then played again today. What does he add? How did he make you guys better, you know, in these two games he played once he returned? Uh, Tank is a warrior, man. Um, coming back from having surgery, that's that's a huge thing. And he he battled through it. Uh, he, he said from the beginning that he wanted to come back. Uh, so his, his um, he, he definitely really – uh, helped us today, brought energy, rebounded for us. He did everything he could. So that credit to uh, Tank. And we're going to go back to Mark Emmert. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, Joseph, you guys got to play two games here on the biggest stage in your sports. What do you hope that does for you going forward as a team? Uh, we're definitely more hungry. Um, we tasted the NCAA tournament and since uh, 2008, so we're definitely more hungry. Definitely going to get back here again, and it's going to be a different story. Uh, next question comes from Paul Oren. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, so I was just going to ask kind of the same thing. How do you build off of this? You know, particularly you guys are going to have a lot of pieces next year with you, with Roman, with, with Hank. I mean, all these guys have said they're coming back. How do you how do you build? How fun are the practices going to be when everyone's healthy? Uh, it's going to be really competitive. I know everybody, not just me. Everybody's going to be hungry. Everybody's constantly going to be in the gym like they already are, because we we want to make it back here again. We will make it back here again. Okay. If we if anyone has any more questions for Joseph, please use the raise hand function. We'll give it another ten seconds or so. I don't see anything right now. 
Nope, doesn't look like it. All right, we're good. Okay. Joseph, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, yeah, safe travels home. Thank you. So that's it for the Drake University postgame news conference. Uh, transcript of Coach DeVries' interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. Once again, www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA's digital media hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. That's www.ncaa.veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E.com. Thanks everyone for joining us.